Okay, mood disorders in four minutes. Lithium, decadion, first used in the 19th century to treat gout. By accident, we found that uh, it has anti-manic effects. There are a number of different proposed mechanisms of action, including um, altering sodium transport in myocytes and neurons, um, altering metabolism of the catecholamines, including dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine, and then altering uh, intracellular signaling uh, via second messengers um, of the IP3 and PKC pathway, which is often tested on examinations. The uses of lithium included uh, the treatment of acute mania and hypomania, uh, bipolar maintenance. Uh, we have uh, data that suggests that lithium reduces suicide risk by decreasing suicidal uh, thinking. Also, some data suggests um, lithium reduces affective-driven violence and impulsivity. Uh, in state hospitals, at least in California, you'll find that many patients um, who are um, criminals um, but also have comorbid psychiatric disorders, uh, when we use lithium um, in those patients, typically it helps with the affective-driven violence and impulsivity. Also, lithium is used as an augmentation agent um, for major depressive disorder. We use it um, at a lower dose than we would use it for acute mania or bipolar maintenance. Remember that lithium is a cation, which means it's not protein bound. It's excreted unchanged by the kidneys. It has a very narrow therapeutic window or narrow therapeutic range. The range um, is 0.6 to 1.2. That's typically the therapeutic range for lithium. Anything above 1.2 has been considered uh, you know, in the toxic range. Um, although different labs have different ranges, uh, this is the typical standard that you'll see. Uh, causes of elevated lithium levels, um, there are many, but uh, the ones to, to be the most aware of um, include the NSAIDs, um, except for aspirin, um, the COX-2 inhibitors, um, ACE inhibitors, except uh, benazapril appears to have a lower risk, um, the thiazide diuretics and the loop diuretics, although the thiazide diuretics appear to have um, greater effect on lithium levels than the loop diuretics. Dehydration and hyponatremia um, both also increase lithium levels. Why this is, it has to do with reabsorption in the kidney. Um, think of lithium and sodium as sort of exchanging one another. If your sodium levels are um, uh, low, uh, then you're likely to reabsorb or want to reabsorb sodium and lithium um, will be taken up um, as a way of um, compensating for that low sodium. So I like to think of it that way as it kind of helps uh, in terms of um, remembering whether hypo or hypernatremia is associated with elevated lithium levels. So again, um, the lower the sodium levels, uh, in other words, hyponatremia increases uh, lithium levels. Hypernatremia uh, decreases lithium levels. Side effects that you should know about, hypothyroidism is a big one. This is why you order a TSH or a thyroid panel before you start somebody and during treatment with lithium. Polyuria, tremor, uh, worsening of acne and exacerbation of psoriasis are also um, common side effects. In terms of lithium toxicity, uh, we know that um, overdose can cause toxicity. We know that dehydration and sweating can cause toxicity, hyponatremia, um, low GFR um, and renal failure because kid, uh, lithium is excreted by the kidneys and if it can't be excreted, then obviously it'll, it'll accumulate. Drug-drug uh, interactions, including the diuretics, NSAIDs, and ACE inhibitors can also increase lithium levels. Um, it appears that loop diuretics have a little effect on serum, lith on, uh, serum uh, lithium levels. The presentation of lithium toxicity includes nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, ataxia, confusion, agitation, slurred speech, and tremor. In terms of management, um, you know, you, depending on where you, what you read, you'll hear different things, but typically you want to um, monitor the lithium levels every two to four hours, administer fluids as a way to flush out the lithium. Um, the question then becomes, when do you order hemodialysis? This is something... Uh, you know, a decision that's made on a case-by-case -case basis. Typically, um, any sort of change in, in mental status with a lithium level above 2.5 is, is reasonable 
for uh, immediate hemodialysis, although uh, you'll read that um, typically lithium levels above three or four is when uh, nephrologists start to think about uh, hemodialysis. However, I do believe that um, when you have lithium toxicity in levels above 2.5, if there is um, neurologic signs, including ataxia, slurred speech, tremor, um, encephalopathy, that's a, that's a good indication that uh, the patient uh, would benefit from uh, emergent uh, hemodialysis.